Father God, we just thank you for today. We thank you for this gathering and the opportunity, Lord, with Patrick and all that passion for planning has done and is doing in and for the body of Christ. Lord, you are raising up people right now in these last days, in this end time, to get us ready and to get the world ready and prepared yeah. for this end time before you return. God, there's a great harvest that must be reached. And we thank you that we believe that you have assigned passion for planning and given them assignment to help us to reach and to plant that we will go forth and fulfill the assignment to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Father God, yeah. we thank you, bless you, and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Praise God. So what I'm going to do is change and put it on my speaker view and that'll work fine. Well, this is, um, did I do that right? Let me see if I do, if I do gallery, that's that. Um, that's fine. Well, today we are so happy as we're getting ready for our first epic, the Embassy Pastors of Independent and Internet Churches Fellowship and launching officially in May of 2023. You know, we experienced and we've gone through the, the COVID uh, pandemic, which was which was something. That was something that was an experience. That was something. I I can just all I can say is, man, that was just that was just something, period, going through that entire pandemic. But now as we've come out of it, what have we learned from it? What have we gathered? What has been the thing that we've learned? And so many pastors, I know they were looking and like, it's going to be the great exodus with Moses, you know, at the Red Sea. And like, when we come back to church, my God, the doors will spread open and they will come running in and running and saying, we can come back to church. We can come back to church. Well, guess what? We, we we back at church and the doors are open and we're like, where are you? No, doors open. We're here. They ain't coming back. So what do we do now? And in preparing for this, I was doing a search and went online and found a powerful ministry that I know and really believe that is a sign and has been doing this for a while to help prepare churches. And as the classical Pentecostal African-American, this area that we're delving into, I know is not one that's really looked at a lot, but with this new generation, with the Gen Xers that are coming in, not just the Gen Xers, the millennials, the IY, IBs, IOUs, you know, all of this, everybody's is coming in. And now how do we reach them and where do we reach them? One of the things that we know, 8 million people, billion people a day go online and on the internet. And if we're going to reach out, we need to reach out and learn how to touch and plant and expand our ministries. I found an awesome ministry passion for planning. And listen, y'all, I was just done. I was too through when I was like, oh, my God. And I reached out, contacted. They immediately, within a few hours, contacted me back. And I was able to meet with this dear brother today that we have here, none other than Patrick Bradley from Passion for Planning. Patrick, I just, you've been such a blessing. See, like I've known you for a long time. We've just been talking and sharing. And it's been such a blessing. We were friends right from the start, weren't we? <laughs> from the start, from the start. It was like no strangers. We just jumped in and started talking and sharing. Thank, yeah, thanks so much for, I'm so glad that you found us online and thanks so much for having me on today. Um, yeah, it, it's our heart to resource the church, especially here in, in North America, but um, really some of our tools are being used around the world. So um, yeah, I want to give you a, a little tour of, of what can be found for free on our website. Um, but but maybe first, if I could just give my heart real quick for all of that. Um, it's, all, it's all yours. What I want to do is I'm going to set it up and I'm going to turn the platform over to you. You got it. All right. So Passion for Planning, we've been around for 20 years. We're actually the ministry of a local congregation. So even though it's a church planning ministry, I'm on staff at a church in Northern Virginia. Um, we started 
uh, actually 30 years ago. We were celebrating our 30th anniversary this year uh, with the idea of being a church planting church, um, which wasn't, there weren't a lot of people in our circles, at least talking about that back then. It was start a church and, and grow it. And we wanted to do that and start more churches. Um, we, we look back and, and see uh, in a in a real way, we're connected in a chain of church plants going all the way back to Acts chapter two. So let's let's keep this thing going, right? We don't want to be the last link of the chain, so we want to plant more churches um, along the way. Man, we we learned quite a few lessons of the hard way, and so um, much of what I'm going to show you today, as far as like uh, tools and resources and the stuff that we're giving away for free, is school of hard knocks kind of stuff. And so uh, we hope that um, that it blesses you and um, helps uh, whatever your efforts are in starting new churches, starting new ministries, um, spreading the gospel, advancing the kingdom um, here in, in North America and around the world. So what I'm going to do is uh, put on screen here. Uh, this is our main website, church-planning.net. And what I want to call your attention to for most of our discussion here today is just the free resources. And so uh, first going to drill into the free tools and templates. And so uh, again, we are, we've been taking uh, notes and creating uh, worksheets and templates and samples and all kinds of stuff over the years to help in our own church planning efforts and help others church plants uh, to other help others to plant churches as well. And so we've just started compiling them and, and it's our heart um, to, to give as much away of this as free as possible. So everything that you're seeing here today, everything we're talking about, it's all free. If you just want to go to the website and download it, um, no strings attached. Well, let me qualify that. When you when you get a download, you'll be uh, added to our monthly newsletter, which we think is helpful, but you can always unsubscribe. <laughs> so that's the, the only string. Uh, but uh, you can see here, there's all kinds of different um, uh, helps and samples and templates on all different uh, types of, of ministries and things that go on in a, in a church. Um, specifically, they they are geared primarily for starting new churches. Like, how do you um, how do you spin up something from scratch in outreach, or uh, when talking about marketing, or some of those kinds of things? And a lot of users have found that these tools are just as useful for an established congregation to uh, to up their game or to retrofit something that they aren't already doing. And so. Uh, for the beginning of our conversation or, or tour here, I want to start with what we call the launch strategy. So there's a whole category here for launch strategy. And the reason I want to talk you through this is it kind of goes with our church planning process. So this launch strategy template here, again, free download. I've got it on this other tab, so I'll just talk you through it. Um, when we partner with a church plant, one of the first things we do on the very front end is help them put together this launch strategy. It's kind of like maybe a business plan. Um, it's not a business plan because church isn't a business, but there's some business that we take care of when we're planning a church. And so that's the idea of this. It's like get all of your thoughts, all of your initial vision and your thinking, um, timelines, come, some of those kinds of things and get them all down onto uh, quote unquote paper and uh, get it out of your head to help you think concretely about it. But then also this becomes a tool. The other part of our process is uh, get your initial stakeholders in the room and review this with them. So maybe it's a coach, maybe it's a sending church, uh, maybe it's a church planning network or whoever it is that you're working with and get some initial feedback, but also get everybody on the same page. So your support team is all in agreement. Yes, this is the calling. This is the vision. This is where we're headed as a church plant. Uh, with this project and that that allows um, all of those to bring their best help to the church planter uh, who is out in the field, who's in the trenches doing the hard work. Wow, wouldn't it be great to, ha to have a team like that that had your back as you went out to plant? So it's really just big, big picture, broad strokes. Um, you can uh, start off with a, a letter, you know, explain your heart to plant the church. Maybe say a little bit about um, the church planter, if that's you as the leader. Uh, talk about vision, mission, values. Uh, talk about your context. Uh, so that'd be like, what's my town like? And who are the people like that live in my town? Uh, so some basic demographic stuff. And, and one of the reasons I want to go through the template here, too, is um, if you say, well, well, Patrick, how do I get demographics information for where we're planting or where we're going to go ahead to plant? 
And so this document ends up as kind of a, a directory of, uh, yeah, we probably already have another tool for you in that regard. So uh, anytime in the, in the planning process, or as you're putting together these documents, uh, or as you're putting together various strategies, things like that, like don't start with a blank document. If you're thinking, where do I even start with outreach? Or where do I even start with, um, you know, going and meeting with um, the leaders in my community or uh, well, church marketing? Uh, probably we've already got a template where you can fill in the blank and that'll at least get you to the to the 50 yard line to get started on that process rather than starting from a blank sheet of paper. So uh, context, demographics, where do we even go for that? If I can point you back to the website uh, here under free resources, we offer you a free demographic report. Um, right now, our software only supports the U.S. addresses, uh, but really you just uh, punch in your information, punch in uh, an address and ask you, give us, uh, do you want a one mile or a five mile radius around that? And then give us a day or two and my church volunteer will pull that report and send it off to you. And, and you'll have all kinds of information about your community um, that you, uh, you may or may not already know. Um, another thing, since we're talking demographics, if we go back to the, to the free uh, tools and templates is if we go to the demographics category, Uh, this tool right here, it's a two or three page uh, PDF. It's demographic information for your church plant. Uh, what it is, we just went and, and tried to find free websites that do demographics kinds of information for you. Uh, everything from the like hard demographics of you, your typical, you know, income and um, age and home values and those kinds of things to uh, soft demographics, like what kind of cars do they drive and what are their music preferences and some of that kind of stuff. It's, it's out there to be found. Um, um, community history, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, so this, this document adds, uh, acts as a kind of directory. So you can go and find um, a whole bunch of websites that are out there that could help you uh, really research and um, understand where it is, uh, either your existing community or uh, again, for the church planter, um, you know, where, where is it? Uh, who is it that God is calling us to in this community? Getting getting underneath all of that. So I've talked a lot, Brenda. What so so far? What um, what questions or um, or comments? Oh, Patrick, no, you're you're great. I was just sitting here going along, following, and um, excited about how we ourselves uh, took advantage. I don't know if I'm being seen or not. It doesn't matter. Um, it, it was just exciting because we actually did that. We took advantage and we did. And I, that was when I was saying, oh, my gosh, this is this is for free. And like you say, the newsletters that come every month are awesome. They're actually tools that we ourselves, Dr. Will and I here at the Embassy Church of God in Christ, we ourselves are using these and uh, we are seeing these and taking advantage as a result um let me see my view here as a result let me see if i, I can, can turn off that. the screen share temporarily i'm sorry yeah i can turn off the screen share if you need the screen back okay there we go uh as a result of of that we actually have uh we were planning a church in we planted a church in interlocking that's in west putnam in the west putnam and the East Alachua County area. When I got those demographics, that was, I actually looked into that area. That was the area we wanted to plant into. As a result, January of this year, there were two of us, those, Dr. Will and I. Then at the end of January, we got one member, one soul from that church plant in that area. Now, in as we're going, and then when we had our first in-person service in Interlocking, in the Interlocking Community Center, we came in with Dr. Will and myself, that one person, and on that week, we took in 13 more people. Now we're mm. up to almost 20 so in good. two months. This works. You know, it is work. And I know, you know, if, if going to church, if you could just pray it in, there would not be an empty church. If we could just sit and pray, the, the churches would be full. But there are things that we need to do 
and have to do. So I was really just looking. And as you were going over those things, just one by one, that is very, very important. I want to encourage the pastors that are watching out there. And the reason why we say um, um, independent and internet churches, many churches, and even though you may, and we emphasize that because that's our area, but some people may, if you're part of a denomination and they're not doing that. Get with your people and tell them they need to contact them for yourselves. But literally, we're trying to, is that me? No. If it is, y'all forgive me. But listen, we're reaching out to those that are independent because many times they're out there by themselves. They're mm -hmm. not connected to anybody for whatever reason. Sometimes church hurt. Sometimes they just came maybe out of a denomination and they don't know what. Well, there are many things that we want to be able to offer them at Epic because we are denominational. We're founded, but almost like y'all are, Patrick, this is an outreach of our church. So we're reaching out to uh, independent churches and those that are starting their churches online and internet. What I do like what you're saying also, we have an expat uh, outreach. Now, our, our children moved to uh, Mexico, Caletro, Mexico, and they're mm. working in Mexico. And we have uh, 29, 32 churches uh, over the last 20 years in uh, Liberia. We're established the embassy mm. network in Liberia. And many of these things that we are learning here can be transmitted and used in other areas. So as what you are saying is looking at and going through each one of those areas, looking at what's offered, the resources, and how they can help. Now, as you were taking your time and not rushing and going through and looking at the website, um, I know you have some other areas you're going to talk about and work out through that. But that's what I just wanted to emphasize, the importance of those and the newsletters. You got to talk about the newsletters every month <laughs> because the newsletters, and this is literally what we do. I print them out, three-hole punch them, and put them in a notebook. And wow. so I can go back and use them and utilize because that's kind of like, I mean, listen, I'm going to let y'all know, I ain't coming up with all this stuff. No need to reinvent the wheel, getting it from fashion for plenty. That's exactly what, you, what we want you to do. <laughs> Y'all are going to see this stuff available. Okay, listen, this is there. We're just this is where we're getting it from, and all the resources in different areas. The newsletters every month highlight something different. It gives you it's like a mini training session with the information mm -hmm. that they can get and the resources that they have. So I'm just enjoying, hey, go back and let's go through and look a little more at what a pastor and what you will be able to find when you go to the website and get information for Passion for Planting. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, let me also say that that it, it's our heart or even our approach to... Um, we want to we want to see pastors and, and planters use these tools prayerfully as a guide to to ask um, you know Father uh, Holy Spirit what what is it that you're calling me to do in my context because there's no such thing as a cookie cutter church um, you know what what it's going to look like in Georgia is different than Virginia versus Wyoming or wherever else and so these are just prompts to um, to prayerfully wrestle through all right what are we going to do. Uh, in our context, um, and we, we try not to be terribly prescriptive in exactly how to go about it, but maybe help you wrestle with the right questions um, in this church planning process. So, Patrick, may I ask a question at this point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry, we're, we're we're in session. So, my question is, and I heard this in the spirit as you were talking. There are many pastors post COVID now that are relooking their ministries and their churches mm. totally. Mm -hmm. Shall I continue what I was doing? Should I plant and become a church planner and use my position now as mentorship and try to plant somewhere else? Or I have my ministry here. How do I redesign it and possibly let my church start first with a church planner? Maybe you are a baby boomer pastor. You don't have the end. I'm telling you right now, we're baby boomers. And listen, <laughs> oh Lord, if I got, if we got 20 
And, you know, Sunday school kid, age kids. I mean, I'm like, I'm giving it up. Somebody can come and get it because I can't handle it. You know, I'm afraid. <laughs> but if you're in that that age where you may be a baby boomer and now post COVID, you know, there's a lot of seniors in the church. You've got the building, you know, you don't have a bunch of debt, but you don't know what to do. Is that something that Passion for Planning could help those pastors with, Patrick? Um, not as a direct support service I mean, uh, kind of situation. Eric, with the re with the rebranding and the identifying of their church, they're rebranding and they're starting over and they're using their church mm -hmm. as a mm -hmm. church plant. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, again, these, you know, these are initially built with the idea of starting from scratch, but we've had a lot of church planners, especially like you're saying, since COVID, a lot of planners have come to it or uh, pastors have come to us and say, hey, can you help me relaunch my ministry or restart things or rebrand? And uh, most of these tools end up being exactly what you need, or at least 90 percent. And so, you know, it, it is a template. So if there's part of it that doesn't help you, we'll just. Just don't do that part. <laughs> and then, you know, um, use what's here that is helpful. And so, yeah, I think especially this this document, which is kind of the the, uh, the big picture in sort of the business plan, causes you to think through, like we scroll down a little further, timeline and budget. Um, and um, also, what are you going to measure to know if it's healthy for the, you know, for six months or 12 months as you're working the church plant? Um, if, if you fill in all these boxes and, and allow this to, uh, to challenge you to prayerfully stretch your thinking and and uh, work through all of this, we th we think that uh, you'll be in a in a better place to understand what's going on, to um to have to better articulate where you're headed so that uh, other people can join you in that. And so, yeah, if you're starting from scratch or if you're restarting something, I think that a lot of these tools are going to be really helpful. Certainly, that's our prayer, and we want to make them free so that if they do help you. Um, that's just a kingdom win uh, for everybody. We think. Patrick, what about in that demographic? Can you put that one back up uh, with the map, with the pin on it that you have with the demographic? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, have you ever driven somewhere and you've gone there so many times and you may be talking or listening to the radio and you look up and you're there and all of a sudden you panic. You go, oh, Lord, I hope I didn't run over anything, dog, cat, little old lady, anything on the way here. Because I don't know. Autopilot. <laughs> You've gone that way so often. Okay, well, sometimes we've been there. We may need, a, would you suggest a pastor in those era situations, maybe getting a demographic report, demographic report of their area where they are now? Because somehow you've been there maybe 10 or 15 years. You don't really know your area anymore. What would you think about that? I think it's a fantastic idea. I think... Um... Yeah, I mean, just think about how much the the world has changed in the last two, let alone the last fifteen. And so sometimes our communities change around us, mm -hmm. um, sort of under the radar. Um, so yeah, again, it's a free demographic report. Ask for one every month, every week, whatever. It, however, that would help you. We're we're happy to do that for churches. Um, yeah. So one of the things also, go, go ahead, as you were talking about, not just the, the different free resources and things that are available, um, go to your next area. I don't know if you're going to assessment or, you know. Yeah, I, got um, a, I got a couple other things I want to show you. Um, sure, we're ready. Uh, one of those things is uh, sort of a church planning checklist. It started with, we just, you know, started jotting down. Well, what are the things we keep doing over and over again as we're helping these church planters? That turned into a spreadsheet, which turned into... Uh, ultimately, we've built this web app called planterplan.com. Uh, again, there's a there's a free version and you get the whole checklist. And it's basically like if you're starting a, a new church or a new ministry from scratch, here's the things that typically the church planners are working through. Everything from putting together an intercessory prayer team to make sure the thing is covered in prayer as you get started to, um, to legal paperwork, to uh, the marketing or the outreach or the equipment, or how do you even find a facility to meet to worship in? Uh, all those kinds of things are in a, in a checklist format here. Uh, it gives you a to-do uh, kind of format, like, hey, uh, you can see I've got this sample one up here. There's, it shows you how much of the task list has been completed, what's overdue, what's due in the next week. Anyway, it just kind of organizes and helps helps you as a church plan work on the first things first and the last things last and um, sleep 
easier at night knowing that you haven't overlooked some big thing. Um, it's customizable. Again, there's no cookie cutter approach. And so there's, um, there's things you can do to, to make it appropriate for your ministry. But that's a, that's a free tool that's out there, planterplan.com. And then um, back on the main website, the other thing, um, there's a couple of other free things here under the training. One is a church planting tutorial. Uh, if, if you don't have the advantage or ability to make it to an in-person church planter boot camp, for example, uh, whatever um, uh, the Kojic is doing or other groups in your area, if you can't make it to one of those, here's some online um, church plant uh, sort of lessons, kind of do it yourself. Uh, training. And then also there's some interactive courses um, for church planning 101, 201, and 301. And those are all hosted over at the uh, the Exponential Church Planting website. And so uh, one of my hopes today too is, is not only just to tour my free resources, but to, to open, maybe broaden your horizons if you aren't aware of some of these things that are out there, like the Exponential Church Planting Conference. Um, it's, it's a big uh, gathering of church planners of all different uh, denominations and uh, networks and, and church groups. And there's a lot of resourcing around church planning that happens there. And so, man, there's just so, so much good content, so many good resources. Uh, like you're saying, Dr. Brenda, don't, don't invent the wheel on some of this stuff. Um, some of our templates are out there to be used. There's great uh, training videos and all kinds of stuff that's out there. Uh, some of it you'll find through hyperlinks from our website. If, if we've already found something, we might, you know, post uh, like in the newsletter, Hey, here's a great resource we found. Click on right, that and right, go do visit that. those guys and um, get help from them too. And so we're, we're just trying to be a resourcing um, kind of hub or um, nexus for, for all of that stuff, uh, especially for church planning. Again, like we've been talking about um, established ministries could use some of this stuff uh, really well, could use it to, to really help themselves um, just as just as much as a church planter. So that's um, that's the free stuff that we have out there. We, we uh, again um, don't feel bad about uh, coming and getting all the free stuff that's there. That's what it's there for. <laughs> we hope uh, we hope that it blesses you and helps you and um, advances the cause of the kingdom. And um, yeah, whatever we might be able to do to uh, to help you in the church planting process specifically. Um, that's all the free stuff. Um, but you'll find some other things here on the website that we do as, as paid services. Cause, um, we like to try to make payroll as often as we can. <laughs> and I have a small <laughs> staff. <laughs> so there's, there's some other like, um, you know, uh, consulting coaching kinds of things that we do. Um, but if you're interested in that, you can just find that on the website. I wanted to focus in on the, on the free stuff that we're trying to give away to help anybody, everybody. Uh, Patrick, let me ask you this. Out of mm -hmm. one of the things, and uh, I know you've been doing, may I ask, how was passion for planting birth? Mm -hmm. What brought this about? Yeah, so as we were uh, running in those church planting circles and, and meeting with church planters and trying to do a little ourselves, um, we started to learn some of those lessons the hard way, but also the... Um, uh, the guy that was our executive minister at the time, 20 years ago, um, he just is, uh, he's a curious guy. And uh, he, uh, he just started asking the church planners, Hey, Hey, church planners, what are you working on? You know, it's about three or four months from the uh, grand opening season. We're all planning to have your big, you know, community grand opening of your worship gatherings in your communities. What are you guys working on? And, and he was expecting to hear from all these church planters, things like I'm investing in people. I'm, you know, growing leaders, I'm building teams, I'm out telling people about Jesus, all the people stuff. But what he heard to a man was the stuff stuff, right? So it was, oh, I'm, I'm struggling with my website, I'm filling out IRS paperwork, I'm ordering equipment or all those other things. It just, you know, the pesky details that bog church planters down. And so the, the origin of our ministry 20 years ago was mm, not on our watch. We got to do something to help keep church planters focused on people because that's what they need to be doing. And um, we want to help them get to the grand opening, knowing that people have heard about Jesus um, in part because they had time to do that instead of doing some of this other uh, stuff. It, it's stuff that still needs to get taken care of, right? There's, there's details that are necessary, but let's get them done. Let's get them out of the way. 
And so that was that was really the birth of our ministry is uh, helping keep church planners focused on people. And so all these tools and services and things that have uh, grown and developed over the years uh, are really in support of that um, vision or that directive. And you're reaching out, and, and this is a, a sort of, I guess, a personal question, too, because I'm always, in, and, and Superintendent Chambers in that, we always try to be the ones, and we have been for over our, this is our 23rd year working in ministry together. It's kind of going to places that maybe a lot of our peers have not, getting this mm. information, regurgitating it, and bringing it back in a way that makes sense for us. Just a curious question. In and over the, the 20 years or whatever time you've been involved in this, mm -hmm. if just in general, what would you say uh, the percentage of African-American church planters coming in and seeking and gaining this information? Would you say it's major, minimal? Or what would you say? Wow, that's a great question. So from the free download standpoint, we, we try to... Uh, we certainly count how many downloads have happened over the years. We're, we're right on breaking the 200,000 mark of how many times the various tools and things have been downloaded and used, and that's happening all over the world. Um, and so hard, hard to say uh, on the split there uh, how many of those, even, even within the count that we have in North America, which is the most of them, um, how many are um, African-American versus Latino or Anglo. Um, yeah, I don't have a split for you on that. Um, I, my, my tribe of origin, sort of our denomination, if you will, it's, it's a, it's a loose, uh, affiliation, not actually a denomination, but we're a tribe. Um, uh, we are traditionally mostly Anglo. And so the majority of church plants that we've invested in and walked with through, through some of these consulting services, um, have been that, but not exclusively. Uh, we love to, uh, love to help anybody and, and work across uh, denominational lines and and church network um, lines, things like that. To uh, again, whatever we can do to uh, to advance the gospel. And I believe that, and I believe that's why Dr. Will and I are called to do. This has basically been my whole life, but with Dr. Will for the past twenty three years that we've been working together, is uh, you have not because you ask not, and sometimes mm -hmm. we're afraid or don't know how. Or now, even in a Google age, and you would think now, okay, well, everything is available, it's out there. People are still sort of doing the same things, or maybe they're looking online at Google or maybe um, Facebook or something and seeing what someone else has done and trying to copy or model that, which doesn't help them at all, you know, because they're not always. <laughs> they're trying to duplicate what someone else does, but that's not you. So when you try to take that and bring it back, you really maybe have copied that event or you may have learned how to do that thing. But does it really help you in the end result where our heart is now is soul winning and discipleship? Because mm. I think that's where this generation now, this generation, you want to know if you're old? My God, I had a rotary phone. My grandkids asked, what was that? I'm like, go out and get out of my face. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Child, if you don't get out of my face, it's a rotary. They, they don't have that. You know, God forbid you ask them who Captain Kangaroo was, you know. So there's a whole generation out there and there's a way. But now, these, so they've got so much. They came in with computers, internet, social media. Many of those that are doing that, they are there. So they're, what they're looking for is almost a reversal. They're looking for something solid because everything has been so digital. Mm. and not real they're looking for something they can touch and i think that with what passion for planning is doing is offering the opportunities for pastors to position ourselves to reach a world and give them something solid mm. a solid gospel that will introduce them the message to jesus christ what do you think patrick yeah absolutely <laughs> Um, yep. I, I don't know that I could say it better. 
<laughs> Fantastic. Well, listen, you've given us so much information and uh, we're going to take that and we're going to make sure that when we uh, go into post edit, we're going to put that on the screen, the website, the information, uh, the newsletter and all of those things. And definitely we're going to come back again and maybe we may pop in, if not at least once a month, at least every other month. We want to hear from you and talk about what's coming up. Maybe uh, highlight the newsletter for that month. Did you talk about the news? You did put that up on the screen, right? Did you put uh, up the newsletter? Actually, I didn't. So I could do that real quick. Let's do that. Um, let's 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 put yeah. up the newsletter because that's very important. So again, under free resources here, uh, here's the newsletter, and so you can scroll you through the archive of what's happened here recently uh, in the newsletters, and it's just once a month. It's typically about four quick articles that we, we think are helpful. Um, things that we're finding, things that we're seeing, things that we're learning. And so um, on the home page, there is a sign up. Um, here it is right here on this banner with this big blue button. You can sign up for the, the newsletter. Or again, if you, any, if you download any of the free resources that I'll offer you the option to sign up for the newsletter in, in that process. So, and I encourage you, Pastor, I, I encourage you to uh, get that, share that, and I encourage you to get back and make contact with Dr. Chambliss and myself here at EPIC, the Embassy Pastors of Independent and Internet Church Fellowship, because, and listen, I know you hear it all the time, it takes a village, but if scripturally we understand it's not easy being out there by yourself and it's no reason to there's it's too much out there and as we're saying mm -hmm. we're gathering this information from uh, ministries like passion for planning and others he sort of tapped on a little bit about exponential that conference is a powerful conference i guess they can just look online and i do appreciate the way that you're trying to to lightweight it, but hey, it's, it's fine. That's a phenomenal conference, and that's something because it's open, and there's a lot more information. So, so Kobe, K with you, we're going to make sure we get the website and put that up. How about that? Is that yep. cool? That's great. And uh, the other reason I mentioned them is because their website is also rich in free downloads and training videos and all kinds of stuff that you can find there as well. So that's a, that's a rich... Um, treasure chest of stuff for uh, ministry and church planning specifically. Fantastic. Well, listen, that's it for this segment that you're watching for the Epic Embassy Pastors of Independent and Internet Church Fellowship, our uh, session for May 2023. We're introducing this uh, during uh, May the United Embassy District uh, Fellowship as well. So as we know, on the 17th and 18th, that is our Hojik uh, District Fellowship, but this will be the uh, uh, in road into it. You'll be hearing that once a month, but also we are preparing and getting ready for 2024. That's right. We're already getting ready because a lot of this that we're doing, we're going to get ready for 2024. We want to be able to bring pastors and things that may not, because if you're independent and you're meeting online, you don't have a lot of places and things to go, we want this to be the gathering place where face by face, face to face, you'll get a chance to meet pastors and people and ministries like Patrick at Passion for Planning and others, and actually be in these workshops in person where you can see and shake hands and, and uh, gather that information and network. That's going to be in 2024. You can save the date. It's going to be in May. And we look forward to seeing you. Well, listen, Patrick, thank you so much. You have been a blessing. And thank you for tuning in. And we'll be right back with another segment.